Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through meditations, readings and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. I'm Susan Jane, and I'm from Intuitive Nature. And today we've got a very, very special guest on. Her name is Deborah Yule, and she is a feng shui consultant but she's doing a lot of feng shui training too so she's putting on these training programs for people to help them now you're probably asking what feng shui has to do with intuition well i'm going to leave that up to deborah to tell you because that'll be my first question i ask her um so i would love to welcome on board deborah yule uh, our feng shui expert here welcome on board deborah Thank you, Sue. It's my great pleasure to be here. And I would love to share what intuition and feng shui have in common. So I believe that we all are very intuitive beings. And what happens is over time, we've become very desensitized to that. And we take on far too much information from other people about what we should be doing and when we should be doing it, and how we should be doing it. And we lose track of listening to our own intuition. So feng shui is a way of um, arranging our environments so that we're more in tune with our environments and with our own intuition. And the reason we are more in tune with our intuition when we um, apply the feng shui principles to our environment is because we're no longer or not as desensitized because we're living more in the flow of, of life. Um, so often we, we think we're going to do something and uh, we're going to put a particular colour cushion in a particular place and someone comes along and says, oh, no, you shouldn't do that. You should do X, Y, Z instead. We're actually no longer listening to our intuition. And often when I go in and do a consultation with people, the thing that they want to do is the thing that's going to give them the best flow of energy in their home. Um, and that other person who came in and it took took that away from them, actually took their own intuition away from them. So most of the time, we actually know what the best things to do are for ourselves. It's just we've got a society at the moment where there's so much input from other people that we we stop listening to ourselves and we start listening to everyone else. Okay. I, yeah, I like where you're going with that. Um, I often have it where you'll ask somebody for some advice or some um, guidance and they will give you that information or they'll give you some of it and then you go, you, you take that on board, you take part of it on board, but then you allow other aspects of you to come through. And so they may suggest a particular colour or a particular cushion, but your idea is a little bit of that, but a little bit of what you've got, you know, what, what, what your intuition is coming through. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Okay, so, so what I'm seeing is, um, and I'm just, you know, putting it back, um, to you. So what I'm seeing that feng shui is going to help us is get because I know feng shui is about the chi and the flow of energy, but that's also going to help our personal flow in our energy as well. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So we talk about in feng shui doing things in the physical environment so that we can bring that into our internal environment. So as we make change in the physical, it creates a change within us. So the words feng shui literally translate as wind and water. So we can see water. We can physically see where the water is, but we can't see the wind. We can only see the effect of the wind. We can see um, that it's blowing the leaves in the tree, for example. So when we make changes in our physical or our seen environment, then it creates a change in our unseen environment, at our inner being. Whoops. You keep throwing me when you stop. I'm, I'm getting so involved in what you're saying. I'm loving it. Um, okay, so we, we've looked at that. So we've looked at the, the connection between feng shui and um, our intuition and how we, we um, react and respond. I know personally um, the differences between your home and your workplace. You know, can we get 
feng shui happening for us in both areas and will it affect other people around us absolutely so um i always suggest that people start with feng shui in the home but i've done a lot of consultations for workplaces um, i've done them for people working in workplaces and i've also done them for the owners of those workplaces now if i start by doing a consultation for an owner in a workplace invariably i will ultimately end up doing a consultation for the home as well if i start with the home i won't necessarily always do the workplace now the reason for that is that our home is our sanctuary it's the place where it nurtures our soul so if we've got home right we're automatically going to take those principles into the workplace and every other place that we go and get that right yeah, that's that's really interesting. So if with, with the listeners that are here today, what we want to really focus on is the home and then how we can implement the workplace as well if they um if we're going that way. So that's really, really good. Um oh I had another question, I can't remember what it was. Oh, I've lost it. Um okay, what what would you suggest next, Deb? Okay, so um for, if you've got a workplace where you're working in the workplace and it's a toxic environment, and unfortunately many, many people do work in toxic workplaces, um, you know, in many ways the shutdown and working from home has been very good because people have actually been able to leave toxic workplaces, still continue to work, but they haven't had to put up with all the stuff from other people in that space. They've just been able to get on and do their job and work very efficiently. Um, but if you are actually having to go out to work and you're in a toxic workplace, there are some really simple things that you can do. So the first one is if it's possible to bring a small multifaceted crystal into the space, into your space. So into the, even maybe. Can I just ask, Deb, where would you get something like that, like the little crystals? So um, I know this is being streamed all over the world. So if you go into a... Um, Oh, Swarovski crystal shop, right? Mm -hmm. And you want a little 20 mil, which is about that size there, little 20 mil crystal. Um, and you can put that under your desk. So I would put it under the middle of the desk. So because what happens is that that radiates out from that central point and it has that energy spreading evenly, making that a nice little cocoon for you to be in. Um, so what we want is, so these crystals are man-made. So if you think about lead crystal glasses, lead crystal glasses, lead crystal bowls. So it's a man-made, it's circular. So it's, and it's got a little tapered end at one end, which is the bit that you'd adhere it to the underneath of the desk with. You could use blue tack for that or, uh, well, that's what I use. So I suggest you use blue tack. Um, <laughs> and just have that energy coming out from that, just to start to provide that little nurturing space just in the place where you're sitting. Um, I, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, Deb. Um, I was just gonna ask too, while you're doing that, what are some of the little things that they may notice happening? Like some of those little changes. So they've, they've got this um, environment at work, they've popped the crystal in, this beautiful lead um, cut, cut crystal underneath their desk, what are some of the, the little things that they could feel or experience or be aware of just so they know that that's happening? So, so that space, um, you've brought a little bit of calm and a little bit of balance to that space. So hopefully it means that some of the more noxious energies or the people with those noxious energies, because generally speaking they're attached to people, um, mm. will stay away. So they're not going to come in and crowd in that space in quite the same way um, but that's only one of the things that you can do this this you kind of need to do a little bit more than just one thing now I was working in an accountancy office and it wasn't the greatest space to be in so the things that I did is I um, created what we call a bagua daisy so a bagua daisy is made up of the eight colors that go around the bagua so the bagua is generally a map that we put over a space to determine where our prosperity corner is or our career corner might be or our relationship sector might be and there's eight colors that go with that on a daisy so i'm going to give you the colors so if you just make the center little bud on the daisy if you make the center piece yellow and then around the outside you'd have pink 
sorry, I've put my fingers down, otherwise we'll get confused here. Um, <laughs> we, start with, we start with pink, we go to white, to silver, to black or a dark blue, to a um, like a eggplanty colour, to a green, to purple, to red. So those are the colours of the petals of the daisy. So you'd end up with eight petals on the daisy. And you could also place that underneath the centre of your desk. So these aren't visible. Nobody can see them. You're just energetically putting these cures in place. The, the third thing that you can do is that you can maybe get some little affirmations cards. So what I did when I was working in this less than ideal environment is I brought some affirmations calendars and I chopped the little affirmations off the back of them and I popped them in my drawer. So when I was having a particularly hard day or somebody was being particularly difficult, I could just open up my drawer, look down and have an affirmation that was there that kind of told me to just keep going that things would get better. And over a period of time, I actually left that workplace. Um, so just do some things to make you feel better. Another thing that you can do is bring in a photograph of people that make you feel good about yourself. It might be a loved one. It might be family. It might be a group of friends that you go out with. It doesn't have to be on display. All right? I know some workplaces are very anti having any form of personalization, but it's once again, it's something that you can either have in your handbag or you can slip in a drawer and you can just open it, see it there. Um, you could also think about having an angel to watch over you. So I have a little silver angel that has crystals in it, once again, courtesy of Swarovski, and you could just have that somewhere just so you know there's that benevolent being helping to send good energy your way. So all these little reminders to make you feel better about being in that space because what happens is that we feel so bad about being in that space we need a way of turning that energy around so that we're actually coming stronger in our power and other people notice that change in us and they start to treat us a little bit differently. And the other thing that happens is because you're no longer vibrating at the energy of that, you may track, track other um, offers to you or other uh, jobs to you. You may find you start to look more hopefully and you may not be there for that long. Wow. So let me just reiterate. There was the crystal under the desk. Yeah. That was one of the other things. Affirmations, the little affirmation cards. Yep. There was a picture of somebody that um, or pictures of, of people that inspire you or make you feel good or are positive uh, role models for you. So you could have them anywhere around there too. You could even have them on your computer screen, couldn't you? Absolutely, you could. But you see, once again, some workplaces won't allow you to do that. So okay. you have to think about okay. ways. Uh, and I'm not saying you have to be discreet. If you can look, you don't want to have your workplace look like a shine to your personal life. So, no. but you want, I, I always suggest about three forms of personalization in the space. And there's one other thing I'd like to mention. Yeah. Um, if you feel like you're being attacked from behind, like you don't have a solid wall behind you. And often when we're in cubicles, we've got our backs exposed. Um, you might notice I've actually got an orange chair, so my back's protected. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a red jumper, a red jacket, anything in the fire colour spectrum, so red, pink or orange, okay. and put them on the chair behind you to protect your back. Now, I actually had a girl that had a um, receptionist position. She was in a corridor, so everybody was always walking up and down behind her. She took a jacket to work with her. It was actually too small for her, but she took a jacket to work with her, put it on the back of the chair and left it there. And within several weeks, she'd been moved into a smaller office where she actually had a wall behind her and she didn't constantly have the stream of people walking backwards and forwards behind her. So we say that people won't walk through fire to attack us. So the red, pink, orange, the fire-coloured um, items, it's like somebody's not going to come and walk through fire to bash us over the back of the head. Oh, that is so interesting because look at my cushion. Woohoo! <laughs> and I have that on the back of my cushion on it. It's great. Hello, gorgeous. I know, I, know, I just love it. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> so, yeah, when you started saying that, I went, oh, I've got to show you my cushion. <laughs> so awesome. good. Um, for those on the podcast who haven't aren't watching the video, my cushion is um, like a ready orange in, uh, in colour and it's got a yellow, a white um, Hello Gorgeous written across it. So that's, that's the whole thing. So it's very uplifting. 
Yeah, so that that's lovely. Um, okay, so we, we've covered up in the home. What about, uh, sorry, at the workplace? We want about three articles or um, areas that we want to actually help improve. So there's the crystal, there's the affirmation cards, there's the images of people. Uh, there is your little your, your little angel you said. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I have I have a, a, a Buddha in the back here, so I find that that's my sort of um, go to. And then, if you're still having trouble, get something red or orange behind you as a form of protection. Yeah, look, the, the red or orange behind you is probably quite high on my scale list of things that you okay. could do. Um, yeah. I, I work from a home office these days. I don't have to go out to work anywhere or deal with people during the day. Um, but if you're in a, an office with other people, then that would be one of the first things that I would look at doing. Okay, cool, cool. All right, we've covered off on that. Now I'd like to cover off a bit more on the, the um, home area because that's something we can uh, adjust ourselves quite easily. Easy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go with that and I'll get off this screen. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, so we say in Feng Shui that the entranceway is the most important room in the home. It's where we welcome opportunity into our space. So when we talk about the entranceway, that's from, say, the number on the letterbox. It's from the door knocker at the door. It's from when we open the front door. So if we've got one piece of artwork or one item that we absolutely love in a door, then that should really have pride of place in the home in the entranceway. So we really want to make that welcoming, that we feel at home, we feel comfortable, we feel that we can relax when we walk into our homes. We don't want our homes to feel like a battle zone. We want to have that calming um, feeling when we come in. And that really starts from when we drive up the road, so when we're approaching the house. So if you've got a front garden, having some um, pretty, pretty colourful flowers in the front garden. But so you feel good when you come up there cleaning the letterbox, maybe replacing it, making sure you've got a lovely welcome mat at the front door, uh, making sure that the noise that the bell makes, you like the sound of it. Um, I had one client who had two doorbells. One had been left there by the previous people and the kids used to ring it and she hated it. So in her case, it was taking away the one she didn't like and keeping the one that she did like. So we really want to make that well, that entrance way, the path that you take to get to the front door as welcoming as possible. Just while we're on the subject, you also want to take your rubbish out the back. So we liken our homes to our bodies. So once again, talking about the seen and the unseen. In this case, we know about um, acupuncture. We talk about feng shui as being acupuncture for the home. So we want to make sure that the good stuff, the new fresh chi, so chi is energy, comes in through the front door and the um, rubbish or, or the garbage actually gets taken out through the back door. Now, if you're in a unit or somewhere where you only have one door in and out of the space, then what I suggest you do is that you consider taking the rubbish out on a separate trip to when you're going out walking or in the car. Now, so often what happens is that we pile stuff up by the front door and we think, oh, I'll grab that on my way out to wherever it might be. We actually want to, when, we put, when we're getting it ready to take out, we actually want to take it out at that point, not leave it by the front door to be taken out when we're going somewhere else. I know it seems like a pain, but you'll actually find that your life flows so much better if you make a point of doing that because you've cleared your head. You don't have this extra thing in your head that you've got to think about, you've got to remember to do. You've actually dealt with that. You've done that thing. The second most important room in our homes is the bedroom. It's the place where hopefully we're sleeping at least eight hours a night. So we want to have that as the bedroom. So really the bedroom has two purposes. It's for sleeping and it's for intimacy. Um, it's really not a place to have family photographs. You don't want your computer in that space. Um, you don't want lots of distractions. You don't want um, in children's rooms, you don't want lots of bright colours and animals and things you want it to be a place where that they can sleep you can get that rest you can be nurtured um, ideally you'd have a separate space for the office you'd have a separate space for the children's toys now i get that that's not always possible so the way around that is to cover them when they're not in use so have a sheet that you can throw over or put up some screens so you've actually sort of partitioning off part of the room, both for the toy playing and also for the computer um, it's not a place for exercise equipment 
If I haven't covered what it is that you've got and you're thinking, mm, I'm not sure I should really have this in the bedroom, then you probably shouldn't have it in the bedroom. The I've, other big I've, I've got something like that in the bedroom. I have my water in the bedroom. <laughs> So just get a screen, um, you know, those little screens you can oh, get yeah. Yeah. so that you can separate it off from the rest of the, of the bedroom so you're not looking at it when you're in rest or intimacy mode. Okay. All right. So, Wang, I'm just going to run over what you've already said. So I'll, I'll just share this. Hang on. I just want to share you this thing, see if I can share it properly. Okay. Yes, that one. Oh, um, beautiful. That's your that's front end. Great. Yeah, that's my front. My front. We've been working on that, and I've got we've got our Buddha and our water and that there. Um, when you were talking about the, the entrance and and things like that, I've only ever looked at it as the the back door. You know, the, sorry, the front door. So I've never sort of thought of it as the whole the whole space. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that. I was so so pleased with my front door. So, can I make a couple of comments on that? Yeah. Um, I can't tell from here and they may not be, but a couple of the plants look a bit spiky to me. Yes. Um, and so we don't want um, spiky plants can be used to deter people. So if you're getting a lot of people you don't want, then that could be a good thing. Um, <laughs> but, too. Where's the other yeah. one? Yeah, that's my other spot. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I do know what you mean because there is the um these are quite spiky but in but they are we're, we're round as well I mean, the red yeah. ones actually i was just behind that so here? Uh, yes there and up the other side of the steps this side this side yeah yeah yes, that's, that's the palm and the, the the leaves are quite round but have a look at the jade my jade up there that is awesome. So one of the other things that we say in Feng Shui is when we have jade at the front and the jade at the back, we'll never want for anything. So um, yours looks like it's a large leaf jade. So yes. that's a great thing to have there, Sue. Beautiful. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take that off now, sorry. <laughs> um, oops, so, sensational. Um, so what we were looking at then is so making sure the front is welcoming, um, not just for visitors but also for yourself. Um, that's what I really got out of that, what you were saying, because um, often, like, well, I'll actually come in through the driveway, through the garage, and when I get, um, and then I actually enter behind that front door that you saw. Um, so I need to have that welcoming there as well. I need to have that space. We really say that um, we really want to have the energy going in and out of the front door. So. Mm -hmm. Um, if we're looking for new opportunity, we really want to be energising the front door by using it. So we actually um, park our cars in the garage um, and in most years we'll go in via the front door. So we'll actually take the groceries out of the car, walk out of the garage and then go in and out of the house through the front door. Okay, okay. I've got a, yeah, I've got a separate entrance that goes up behind my front door and we end up at the same landing. Yeah, um, it, um, you really, so take the dog for a walk through the front door, Go, you know, find some excuse to be using that front door energy. Okay, okay, cool. That's, yeah, that's interesting then. Okay, so that, so it's all about that, that front in energy and making sure when we're coming home, we're coming home to something that feels good. So remove anything that doesn't make you feel comfortable. Or, get rid of it. Yep, yep, and allow that space to, to be welcoming and your place of safe. Yeah, but plus we're the person that lives there. So so often in our homes we do things to make it look nice for other people, but we're the people that are living in the home. It needs to make us feel good. Um, mm -hmm. I had a client quite a number of years ago now, and she had a house that was really a show home for other people. She didn't really love any of the stuff. She just wanted it to look good so she'd fit in with her uh, wealthier friends but it didn't actually do anything for her because she'd gathered all these things up from opera shops and places. She didn't love any of it. She just had it because she felt it elevated her in other people's eyes. But we need to make our home a space that makes it feel good and safe for us. Okay, okay, cool. Um, because otherwise we're not in our own intuition. We're always pleasing other people rather mm -hmm. than doing what's right for us. And really when we're tapping into our intuition, it's about doing the thing that's right for us. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so that's the front. And then you started to talk about the bedrooms um, and yeah. delegating areas. So um, what I got out of it, if you've got an office space or a computer space, delegate the area for that and either screen it or cover it to define so it's not there all the time creating that energy but to, to define that that's that space is that correct it's really about um when you're sleeping or when you've got intimacy happening in the bedroom about not having that other external energy which doesn't fit with that um our modern homes tend to often have the bathroom almost coming into the bedroom as well. That's a really big no-no because -no water is one of the energies we don't want in the and uh, sorry, in the bedroom. So we really want to have, uh, look, I'm all for having en suites, right? I'm not into going down the back of the yard in the middle of the night, walking through the cold grass to get to the <laughs> outhouse. I'm really very happy to have internal bathrooms. But our bathrooms are energies, an energy we don't want to have mixing with the kitchen or the bedroom or the lounge. They are a very separate energy that we want to close off from the rest of our living space. Okay, okay, right. So, um, yes, yeah, so en suites, yeah, preferably with a door so you could close them off? <laughs> Definitely with a door so you can close it off. Okay, um, so well, there. Yeah. <laughs> okay well, hang on, Deb. If I like I've got an open ensuite and we have put like a, a um, you know the concertina beautiful wooden concertina across yes. most of it so it's only got one space what is one of the things that I could do to help my space there or if I have got um, an area that I want to uh, delegate uh, like um, you know when you're talking about having a, an office area that's not actually its own room. How, what sort of things that can I put there okay. to help the feng shui flow? Well, you've done the right thing, right? By putting that concertina um, screen up, that's a fantastic thing to do because you've blocked it from the view of the bedroom. Yeah. Um, and that's also what you really want to do with the walker or with the office or with the children's play areas, so defining the separate areas. Now, often we don't have that much space, right? Mm. So it may be a matter of just covering it with a sheet or something when it's not in use. So um, I formerly lived in a house where the first thing that you saw when you came in was the television. So we made a real point of making sure the television got covered so it wasn't the thing there saying, hey, look at me, turn me on. Um, mm -hmm. And I had a cover over it. The current home that we live in has a little nook that it's tucked into. So unless you're going specifically there to watch the television, you go, go and use that space. It's a dedicated space for the television. Um, so you really want to have it peaceful without things clamouring for your attention all the time, but you want to have objects that really raise and lift your vibration, lift your energy and make you feel good about being in that space. Because when you feel good, you haven't got all this chatter going on in your head. And when you haven't got all that chatter going on in your head, you can think more clearly and your intuition is going to be much more open to receiving messages. And you're actually going to be able to hear those mm -hmm. messages instead of them just adding to the noise that you're hearing. Yes, exactly. Now, um, the other thing I want to, because we're getting a bit low on time now, so I just wanted to let, I've, I've got the the, um, the little ticker going in down at the bottom and it says you can book a Feng Shui consultation with you, Deborah, by calling 0423 six three zero nine two eight now i am saying all that because this is a podcast as well so that so it's great having that visual but i wanted to make sure people knew about you the other thing is to um your website which is feng shui miracles.com.au it's an australian business deb's here on the um, gold coast where i live so it's in australia so that's why we're into the shoestring tops now it's starting to get really warm here uh, the beautiful burley beach in the picture behind me ah oh, there you go it's beautiful um so if they wanted to connect with you again deb so they wanted to um uh, you're doing training now is this training to become a fun feng shui consultant so i provide trainings for people looking to become feng shui consultants um and i can provide other workshops and i can do things by Zoom and all those wonderful modern-day conveniences that we have. 
um, whatever it is that you're interested in, if you'd like to connect with me, we can see what we can do to help you out with what it is that you're looking for. Yep. And one of the big, oh, I've got to tell them the story about mine. Deb, right when she came to, when I was staying in this little, we were living in a little unit. It was a, it was a standalone unit, three-bedroom unit. And Deborah had come around and she sort of went, oh, she didn't, she didn't say a lot. She was very polite, very pleasant. But the next time she popped around, she brought me this little um, silver tin. So it, do you remember this, Deb? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she bought me this little silver tin and she said, told me where I needed to put it and, um, and I said, well, what do I put in it? And she goes, well, put in whatever you want. At that particular time we were in this, like I said, this little tiny unit and I wanted to move into our own bigger place. I mean, we owned that little unit but we were looking at a bigger house, something where, you know, the kids could be and, and where we could enjoy. So... I remember, you know those, um, oh, I don't know if you get them in America, but we have those homes, those uh, like martyr homes or boys' right. town homes. Yeah, where, where you buy the tickets to win a home. They were, one of those was there. So I folded up and I popped it in the tin and put the tin aside. It wasn't until, we put the tin where I was supposed to, it wasn't until we moved into our beautiful home and you saw a big picture of that before um it's a it's a lovely home and as I'm unpacking this little tin came out and I just couldn't believe it because basically what that image was in there was what we were moving into wow so, yeah it was I got goose pimples when I when I opened this tin up and I, I I showed my partner and I said oh my goodness look at this this is what we wanted and I think it was like two or three years it took this is what I wanted two or three years ago this is what we've got and it just it was just beautiful so feng shui has a really good way of doing that and the way that it was connected with my intuition was that I put that out there as well that's what I wanted I put I put the mental thought into it I put the the um, positive energy into it and then the, the feng shui, the practical side of it came in too to help bring it all about. So it's amazing. It's amazing little, it's, it's, a, it's another tool, isn't it? It is because that little tin, um, silver is the colour of synchronicity. So um, you could equally have used tin foil or owl foil to wrap that in. So it's about an affirmation of something that we're looking to bring into our into our life. Um and, and it's putting that in the northwest corner, which is the synchronistic events corner. So it's um, about connecting with the universe so that all the things synchronistically fall into place to allow that to happen and to bring that to us. And you were quite focused on that. A lot of people can get very scattered. So it's a matter of being quite focused on what it is that you really want, um, not what you think you should want. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. What's actually right for you deep in your heart? Oh, that's that's amazing. I just love it. Um, all right. So if anybody wants to know any more about Feng Shui, um, you can contact Deborah, like I said, on 0423-630-928. That is an Australian number. So if you want to connect with her, it might be best if you're in America, and I've got a lot of listeners in America, uh, it is www.fengshuimiracles.com.au, so Australian, um, uh, what am I saying, business, Australian business. So thank you so much, Deb, for being thank on the show. Um, it, it's brilliant. If anybody has any little um, tips, put it down on the uh, on the YouTube. This will be on YouTube. Put it down on the um, on the the bottom part, oh, God, I'm shocking with names. I am just going to put, bring up the branding. I'm going to say bye for now. I'm going to say goodbye, Deb, and thank you for, for coming on board. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been no. lovely. Okay, thanks, Deb. Um, so that's it from me. I will end this video now, and I will catch up with you next month. Uh, no, next week. What am I talking about? Okay, bye for now, guys.